I'm Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs, and even though I'm supposed to be on holiday and not thinking about ships, I can't help it. So today, we're going shipwreck hunting. I know it really doesn't look like much, but believe it or not, around me, there is a huge shipwreck. Today, I'm on the Great Ocean Road in Australia's southeast coast, in the state of Victoria, my home state. For hundreds of years, the only way for Europeans to get to Australia was to sail right past here, right under the bottom of Australia, on the way back up to, say, Melbourne and Sydney, which were the two major trading hubs in the 19th and 20th century. This presented a serious issue for ships of the era, because without modern day guidance systems and navigation, at nighttime, and especially in a storm, it was impossible to see where you were going. And this is not the kind of coastline you want to be bumping into. But of course, a lot of them did. And so we know that there are probably about 300, maybe 350 wrecks in this stretch of coast. A very dangerous bit of ocean. And this was the era of the Clipper, a fast, ocean-going sailing ship, fully rigged. Often the conditions were uh, abysmal. I mean, there's a fair degree of romance afforded Clipper ships now, but at the time, they were purely utilitarian. They were kind of like the big cargo freighters that you see today. Some of them were wrecked on the coastline here and have gone down in history, like the Speculant, but also the Lockhart, probably the most famous of them all. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of the wreck site to give you an idea of exactly what it is that we're looking at and some of the clues that can tell us what the ship might have been, how it ended up here, and how exactly it came to rest on the rocks. So first of all, is this point here, on the sand behind me. When I was younger, there was a large hawse pipe. Now this pipe would have fed the anchor chain through and out the side of the ship. So that gives us a rough indication of where the bow came to rest. And this point over here behind me may be about 30 or 40 feet away from where the horse pipe was discovered. It has all kinds of bits and pieces of debris, copper, random bits of steel and iron that have just melted into rock. But most importantly, there's tons of bluestone. And this is really important because bluestone isn't natural to this coastline and it's only here for like 100, 150 feet. What? She almost fell in. <laughs> and this is really important because bluestone is not natural to this coastline and it's only here for like 100, 150 feet, which indicates that she may have been carrying bluestone as cargo away from Melbourne for trading or potentially using it as ballast. It's hard to tell. As you can see behind me, it's everywhere. Based on the fall of bluestone, we can gauge where her hold might have been, where the ship burst open as these big waves came rolling in and gutted her. The ship would have basically over time exploded and all of the relics have been washed up under these rocks. And so this is where we find a lot of small pieces, even personal pieces like decorative inlay, pieces of brass, glass, and that kind of thing. So we're gonna have a look in here in a minute. And then heading over here, it's probably my favorite piece of the wreck, but unfortunately, it's underwater, so I can't show it to you at the moment. I tried coming here during low tide, but no dice. But in this little crevice, there's a wash basin. An old enameled wash basin. And this is a really crucial piece because it's so far away here from the rest of the wreck over there. And typically on older ships of that era, it was the captain who had access to amenities like wash basins. And of course the captain's quarters were often in the very stern of the ship. So it stands to reason that this is where the stern of the ship came to rest. That is where the hull broke apart. And a little further over there where we found the horse pipe all those years ago, probably where the bow ended up. So we can get an idea that the ship smashed onto the rocks, potentially starboard side on, or maybe bow on, and then was blown onto her starboard side. And that over time, the ship dissolved, broke apart, and everything that's natural fiber like timber, rope and canvas have all rotted away but we still have pieces of metal copper 
iron and steel that tell the story of the wreck. So we're going to do some digging and we'll see what we can find. <laughs> what is that? Amazing that while I was just uh, filming my monologue, my assistant, <laughs> I just found this piece right here that we'll, uh, we'll extract right now. Now that is a, a beautiful piece of rigging from the ship. This is steel rigging. You can see that it's been worn down over the course of 100, 150 years by the ocean. You can just make out the individual strands of wire that would have been wound around to make this, uh, this stay, which would have probably held part of the mast to the ship. And it was sitting right there for 100, maybe 150 years. Unbelievable. <laughs> the, more I, uh, the more I look into this uh, rock pool, you can see there's bits of iron and steel and everything just all uh, melted. Oh, I think we just disturbed the little crab here, look. Oh, he's just, he's just hanging out. Sorry, buddy. See that piece there? Another, uh... oh, there's a crab right next to it. Beautiful piece of rigging that's just shattered. These are two individual uh, strands of probably steel rope that would have formed one of the metal stays for the mast. That's amazing, it's just sitting there, you know? Incredible. It's funny, just walking along, you find just big pieces of nondescript iron that have melted into the rock. You know, ashes to ashes. Slowly the ship dissolves into the, uh, into the ocean. It's not just uh, steel that you get here either. It's these beautiful pieces of, of copper sheathing. Back in the day, to protect the wooden hull of the ship, these huge pieces of, of copper sheet, very, very thin, were uh, nailed to the side of the ship to protect it from, from corrosion, get, protect the wood from, from rot, and to increase the speed of the ship. You can just see some of the original copper color right there, but time has turned it green. You see this exact kind of copper on the hull of the Cuddy Sark. Now in this uh, big rock pool here where you can see the blue stone, this is roughly where the hull of the ship came to rest. Straight away you can see big pieces of iron, like that one. But this is the kind of thing you want to keep an eye out for. Wait until you can see the green of the copper just sticking out right there. Look at that. That's a beautiful piece. That's part of the hull right there. Of course, there were nails that uh, held this kind of copper to the hull of the ship. Unfortunately, there are tons of those nails still left, but I've just found a bunch. Hard to make out. You can just see that telltale green. Let me just pull this little bit up. That looks like to me a bunch of nails all melted together. Let's see if there's. Oh! There's one by itself. Look at that. Copper nail. It's interesting, it's got a, uh, a square profile. I mean, you can just see that. It's not rounded like modern nails because of course this was all cut from a single piece of copper wire, square in profile. Unbelievable. And this, much clearer now. <laughs> it's a, a bunch of nails all just melted together. You know, you wonder if uh, this was from the hull or if this was actually just a, a box of nails that has just disintegrated. The wood's been eaten away. You see that kind of thing with uh, plates and bowls on the wreck of Titanic. You'll see stacks of plates that once would have been in boxes, all in a neat row, but all the wood's been eaten away. Amazing. So uh, while well, my assistant keeps looking at bits and pieces down here on the waterfront, we're going to go up here and check these rocks out, where the uh, bulk of the ship's hull broke apart and was buried with time. We'll see what we can find. God, do you think I could have found an older shovel? This actually just looks like part of the shipwreck. Right? God, that is an awful sound. It's 
funny, uh, this is really hard digging because of all these rocks. But uh, it's worth it because you find this stuff here, whatever this is being protected by a little bug. Maybe you won't mind if we uh, pull this up, but this looks like a big piece of rigging. That uh, steel rigging that we've been pulling up. Oh. Let's go brush it off and have a look. This is without a doubt the biggest and most intact piece of rigging of this era that I've ever seen. This is incredible. It looks like it <laughs> came just off the ship. Look at that. Unbelievable. You know, I wonder if it's part of a, a single line spanning from there to there. Maybe one of the, uh, the masts fell right over here and took the rigging with it. But that is, a, that is an unbelievable piece. We don't want to disturb the environment too much because here in Australia it's actually illegal to keep pieces of shipwreck. So whatever we find, if it's small and insignificant, we're going to put it back and leave it where it is. But if we find something maybe a little more important, we'll be contacting the local maritime museum and making a donation. It would be great to find a clue that could tell us the name of this ship. It's amazing that just pulling up, uh, pulling up rocks over here, we find these things that weren't even buried. Um, I only assume this is a big piece of maybe a, uh, a pulley system or a block or a shackle. And this definitely looks like a big shackle from the mast, maybe a uh, maybe from a yard arm or a spar. You can imagine the the body of the spar or yard arm going right in the middle of that, and then this being secured at the other end. What? Wow. We don't want a chicken dinner. Whoa. That is unbelievable. I told you, I need to get a wetsuit and go in there. <laughs> Big piece of copper. And what's incredible about this one is it's still got the, uh, the holes there for the nails that would have held it to the ship's hull. Unbelievable. Compare that with the, with the piece that I just found. And it's clear that uh, there is somebody who is much better at this than I am. It's incredible when you take the piece that we just found and the nail is a perfect fit. Look at that. Good as new. <laughs> so this would have been the exterior surface of the copper and uh, this would have been the ship's hull right here, the wooden beams of the ship's hull. And these nails would have held the copper right onto the side. You do wonder if this was a grave site, if anybody was lost in the sinking or if they maybe died of exposure. Conditions in the voyage out to Australia at that time were, were absolutely horrific and it didn't really change much until the advent of steam when ships could be bigger and safer and more comfortable. For immigrants or even convicts coming out to Australia, it must have been a terrifying time. You were tossed about in relatively small wooden ships totally out of your element in what were often uncharted waters. The food would have been horrible, and it was a months long voyage, six months plus. And to think that so many of them, hundreds of them, were so close, we're less than uh, two hours drive from Melbourne city. Often, these were just people looking to make a better life, and to have risked that voyage out, you can only imagine what conditions must have been like back home for them. But they were so close to making it and they end up smashed up on, on these rocks. It's really sad. But it's also a major part of Australian maritime history. So to be able to come here and actually interact with it uh, really makes it feel not that long ago. The fact that it's just sitting right there is, uh, is amazing. Well, that was a uh, pretty successful day, I'd say. I think finding the uh, the big pieces of copper with the nails still in them was probably my probably my highlight. Now I can we try this again sometime. See what else we can find. Who knows? Maybe she was carrying gold. That'd be pretty good. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more content, please like, subscribe, do the whole thing. Not to sound like every bottom feeding YouTuber out there, but visit my new Patreon at patreon.com 
slash Oceanliner Designs. Your support enables me to come out and do interesting little things like this, as well as draw more and more ocean liners and ships from history. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.